So let's talk about required practical one producing pure dry salts. So the aim of this little experiment is to produce a sample of salts. And really we're gonna tackle this from three angles. They need to be pure, they need to be dry, and it needs to be a salt. Let's, so let's deal with this in turn. Pure, so we just want the salt. Dry, no water. And salt, if you remember, that is going to be a metal joined to a non-metal. That's an ionic compound, by the way. And the one that I've picked to chat about today is copper sulfate, mainly because it means that I can use this lovely blue picture of their crystals, of its crystals. Now, a lot of these pictures today I've taken from Wikicommons, so a big thank you to those guys over there for providing these pictures. So, off we go. How do we get pure dry salts, for example, like copper sulfate? Well, if I was gonna make copper sulfate, I would start off by using copper oxide. because then what I can do is I can react that with an acid to make a salt. There are various uh, chemical reactions that you can do if you want to make a salt. Uh, you can do a metal plus an acid. That will make, give you a salt and water. Remember, that's mash. Uh, you could have a metal oxide, uh, like copper oxide, for example plus an acid will give you a salt and water. You could have a metal, oh, I'll use a different car for that. Um, you could have a um, metal hydroxide plus an acid, which will also give you a salt and water or you could use um, a metal carbonate plus an acid, and that will give you a salt plus water plus carbon dioxide. Now, unless it's specified which one that you're supposed to be doing, any of these will work because they will all produce a salt, okay? Now it just so happens that for this little chat now, I am gonna talk about carbon, uh, copper oxide and sulfuric acid. So let's just jot down that equation really quick. So we've got copper oxide plus sulfuric acid. Oop, I'm gonna run out of space writing this with words. This is why simple equations are better will give you copper oops, sulfate and water. Now I'm gonna write that in symbols because it's just so much better using symbols. Cu O is copper oxide plus H2SO4, CuSO4 plus H2O, perfect. Okay, so you have neutralized uh, the sulfuric acid by using copper oxide as a base. Now we have a slight problem here because this, well this is your salt that you want. And this is water. Now if you remember back to um, our earlier chat, this needs to be dry. So at some point we are gonna have to try and get rid of that water. And that is a story for later on. So job number one, you heat the acid. Okay, not very much, really. I should say you warm the acid. Acids tend to give off quite unpleasant vapors if you heat them too strongly, so you're warming it. And this is just really to encourage the reaction along. And once you've warmed up your sulfuric acid, you can start stirring in your copper oxide. And you will notice, oops, you will notice that it starts turning a lovely blue color. 
okay? So you are producing copper, uh, copper sulfate. The thing here though is you have to add the base to excess. Well, what does that mean? Well, if I'm adding something to excess, I'm adding too much. Basically, I want every scrap of acid that I have used to react. So I am going to keep adding more and more of my copper oxide into the acid until what I'll start to get is I will start to get unreacted solid at the bottom. And that is my clue that I have added the base to excess. There is no more acid left which can react uh, with the base. Okay, and at that point, you can stop because you are done. The problem is that in here now, you will have your salt, in this case, copper sulfate. You will have water, which we need to get rid of. And now you've got unreacted solid, which is the, the base which I've added, which, which hasn't reacted because there's no acid left. And if you remember back to the start, it needs to be pure. So we have two things that we need to deal with. We need to uh, improve the purity by getting rid of the unreacted solid, and then we need to dry this all out. How are we going to do that? Well, we are going to filter it. So we are going to filter the solution. We are going to pour it into our funnel with filter paper and this will remove the unreacted solid. And that means that what we'll be left with after we've filtered it is we're gonna be left with uh, our solution. And this will contain here, this here will be copper sulfate and water. So we've got our salt and water. So of our objectives that we need, we need a pure dry salt. We have achieved purity. Well done. And it's also a salt. Well done. But now we need to dry it all out. Now in terms of how you dry it out, there are a couple of uh, different solutions. At this point here, you could just wait the, the water will evaporate quite naturally all by itself. And then you'll be left with lovely copper sulfate crystals. However, as an alternative to that, what you can do is you can use a method that's a little bit faster. What you can do is you can get a glass dish called an evaporating basin. And then you can put it over the top of a uh, beaker. Fill the beaker up with water. And then you can heat it strongly. Now, why you bother? Oh, sorry. And of course, put in your lovely copper sulfate solution in the evaporating basin. Now, why would you do that? Well, this water here at the bottom is going to start evaporating. It's going to start making steam and that will warm your solution and just speed the uh, evaporation along. You don't heat the basin directly. There are a couple of reasons for this. First of all, if you start heating it directly, they have a nasty tendency to start spitting out hot crystals of copper sulfate. Also, evaporation, look, evaporating basins are um, usually quite thin glass and they have a nasty tendency to crack if you, uh, if you heat them directly. So you don't heat them directly. You do something like this. You heat them uh, with a little bit of steam with a beaker with some water in it. So whether you are prepared to wait days and days and days or whether you want to speed things along by heating it over some water, you can evaporate the water off and you can achieve objective number three. It becomes dry. And then what you have left at the end 
is you have some copper sulfate crystals, which are pure. Why are they pure? Because earlier on, we filtered them and got rid of the unreacted solid. They are dry because we evaporated off the water, either by waiting a massive amount of time or by uh, speeding things along with some with some steam and some hot water in a beaker. And it is a salt because you have your uh, metal and your non-metal. Thanks very much.